very warm welcome among uh, the young writers that we are speaking to here at the Tata Literature Live uh, Festival is David Soloy. Is that correct? Am I pronouncing it correctly? You're pronouncing it very well. Yes. Fantastic. <laughs> and of course, being of Hungarian origin, but now uh, after having spent uh, time in London, really not very happy being away from what I understand. <laughs> now you're based in Hungary, mm -hmm. where your family originated from. That's right. Yes. 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 But Obviously, you've written three works, you've written mm. three novels, and one of them has been The Innocent, which is a historical piece that's set correct. in that, Russia. That's right. Yeah. And the other one that, has, uh, that is uh, your more recent mm. work uh, called Spring is more contemporary, it's more a product of your imagination. Absolutely, yes. 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 So when you talk about a comparison between the two works, these two, one being yeah. a historical piece and one being this, yes. which is just you know, a novel, <coughs> What goes into it? How do you compare? Well, the process is extremely different mm. um, in each case. Uh, the the historical work obviously relies a, on a, a large amount of um, research, uh, years really. It was it was it w I was working on it intermittently while writing my first novel, which was the first to be published, London in the Southeast. So there were there were literally years of of, um, of research involved in that and I have a small library of books on the Soviet Union at home as a result of that um, and in its own way that was a very satisfying and interesting thing to do having said that I must say I do find it more more satisfying to write the other kind of book that I've written um, which both of the other novels I've written would fall into this category which is a book set in my own contemporary world the world that I know and inhabit myself um, you said that the um, th those kind of books were characterized by being pure works of imagination, whereas the other one was was not. So I was, but the research based was something slightly different. But in a sense, the the historical novel is more a work of pure imagination in that you're having to make everything up with that. You know, you can you, <coughs> you get can, your historical facts. You can get the historical you. facts, but you then have to invent Give the entire shit. world you're, you're when you're trying to imagine that world you're having to imagine you know every sort of teacup every you know shoes that people wear I mean everything is it needs to be invented essentially by the writer with reference to the research sure but um, whereas in the contemporary novels the co contemporary set novels that I've written while the characters and the story might be made up in a sense, the the context is not made up. The context is something that I actually I know it intimately myself because it is your world. Because it is my world, um, and I think describing that world is what gives me the most satisfaction as a writer. So, have you reflected on why that is the case, David? Um, <sighs> Yes, but I haven't really come to any <laughs> conclusions about it. Perhaps, I and mean, I'm only suggesting sure. it, that it might be for the kind of reactions that you've got. And uh, there would be that many more reactions from a contemporary world about you, in yeah. a way, making a commentary of it. Yes, And people yes. reacting, yes, I know that. And that might be a very difficult thing to do with a yes, novel that yes. is historical in yes. context. Yeah. No, I mean, I, it, it definitely works both ways in the sense that as a reader, I also enjoy reading about the world that I know and recognize. Um, it's one of the sort of greatest pleasures of reading for me, of reading fiction, to read about stories which are set in, um, in, a, in a setting that I, I know myself. And Anyone then, that strikes out? Um, one, uh, one contemporary British writer who I admire very much is Alan Hollinghurst mm -hmm. and I think his novels have that quality yeah. um, you know the, uh, the 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 line of beauty is, is set in the 80s which I remember of course and um, <coughs> you just feel such a sort of powerful sense of recognition of, of the time and the texture of that world and, and and the ability to be able to transport you into that period yes yes is but that I is that is that difficult um, you is mean that something that you work hard at creating and being able to lure, to seduce in a way yeah, your yeah. reader into that other world that he or she may not know enough about? Which world are you talking about? The yeah. historical world that you create. In, in the historical novel. In the historical yes, novel. Yes, yes. Well, in the historical novel, that's kind of one of the pleasures of that is creating a, 
sort of stage set world um, because it, that's what it is really. I mean, it's a it's it's a it's a fake world, but theatrical, theatrical, you know. Um, but there is obviously a great pleasure in in doing that kind of the, the there's more of a sense of puppetry in, in that because it is this you know this invented um, context so so that that is that is a sort of pleasurable game to play to, right. to, to create the illusion of that but as the writer I was always almost too I it seemed illusory to me it never entirely stopped seeing seeming illusory to me in the case of the historical novel that I wrote right um, so it, 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 it wasn't as satisfying for me to write, to sure. write as the others. Right. But now, being able to create that contemporary world, um, you talked about the ease of being able to do that because you're living in that world. Do you find that you know, the theater of the mind that mm -hmm. needs to kind of be a function of writing, mm -hmm. of good writing, as it were, or being able to chronicle our times, as it were? Yeah, were, yeah. Is, no, th th is that going to play on your mind when you write? Yeah, to some extent. Mm -hmm. To some extent, there is that. There is, you know, the, but it, you, do, you know, it, it's nice to sort of weave in um, real things, real events. Uh, they they play a part in in creating the sense of solidity and reality of the of that world. Um, sort of commenting on it in in political ways and that kind of thing is it, not so much. I mean, that doesn't have such a. That's not. I, I don't really write to address contemporary political issues, or um, well not directly in any case. Right. I mean, I don't sort of, I don't, I don't really try and bring a point of view on things like that. Um, but the appeal, in a global sense, because you're traveling, you're mm. traveling to India with mm. this novel, mm. and you're looking at mm. reactions as well. Mm. Do you find that people are that much more forthcoming? That they, the 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 kind of issues, the kind of sets that you create are things that people relate to easily because we live in such a global world? Do you find that the case now? I hope so. I mean, I, I hope that that's the case. Um, although having said that, there's also a definite sense, and this applies to all, to all literature, to all art, um, the, the sort of universal is always approached through the very specific. Right. Um, it's works which tend to be very committed to the specificity of a certain place which also achieve the most universal resonance. It's almost paradoxical. But yeah. um, if you think of, I was talking to uh, some people earlier today, and obviously for the last 150 years, Charles Dickens has been very popular in India as in most other parts of the world. And for, you know, for, for British people reading him today, obviously he's talking about a different world. For Indians, he's talking about a doubly alien world in many ways. But because he's so committed to the specific details of his own world it's through that that the the sense of universe universality comes I think and so it to, to try and be universal is almost you know directly to sort of go for that in a direct way is I think almost certain to, to just end in platitude and failure you have to always aim at, at the specific and then hope that some kind of resonance arises out of it. But that. surely it must be a little m bit more than hope because when you're writing a novel there are considerations at stake and uh, the more you write perhaps uh, that is going to play up as a feature in your mind that much more. Which consideration? The consideration of commercial success of being right. able to appeal to a larger audience yes, yes. because if you don't do that you don't get to travel as no. much as you do. <laughs> no, and you don't get so many more inspirations. No, you write no, more works no, in the, the future. The British Council don't invite me to India. Yeah, no, that would be, that would be, that, that does have to be borne in mind. Yeah. But again, I, I think that um, hopefully the success I've had is based on the, the you know, this, this writing books that are very, I mean, except, you know, with, with the exception of The Innocent, writing books which are very much rooted in London and in contemporary London and um, I, I hope a city that you've stopped living in but in, in, a, way, in, a, in a funny way that helps you know um, being away from yeah the, yeah I mean the setting the, of yeah, your no it, it's, it's funny how that helps the um, the London in the southeast I wrote uh, quite a large part of when I was um, living in Brussels for a year or two and spring was was mostly written in Hungary right. um, so there is a sort of being away from the place um, does sort of give a perspective, it sort of adds a, 
it adds a certain nostalgia mm -hmm. to your thoughts and feelings about the place. And, and that, that's a good thing? Uh, it's a good thing in the sense that it creates, you know, nostalgia produces very vivid feelings about a place, you I know, see. and so those, those feelings are sort of, they're almost like fuel that can kind of fuel you on the journey of, of writing a novel about the place. Um, that's my experience anyway. So hopefully, hopefully I won't lose touch with London to the point where I, I find I can't, I can't write about it anymore. Um, the book I'm working on now, though, is, is more of a sort of pan-European project, actually. Um, uh, an excerpt from it was was published in a, in, a, in the Granta edition uh, right. earlier this year, and it, it it is more about sort of movement within Europe. So it will be a, a more international piece, actually. But right there, you go. So then, yeah. you are in a sense being aware that you need to reach out to a larger audience. Yeah, and, or it's or it's just that my own. Yeah, it's it, or possibly maybe subconsciously yeah, that's yeah, how it works. Maybe, 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 yeah. but also. Maybe it's just sort of drawing level with my own experience because I, I travel in Europe a lot now between Hungary and London very frequently and to other places. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just keeping pace with my own experience in a way. That's it fantastic. Yeah. We hope to see much more of that, David. Many thanks for speaking to us. Thank you.